accountable care organizations. There's been a lot of questions over what they are, what they look like, and now that we have some guidelines from the Obama administration, let's talk to an expert who's been working with these kinds of organizations for some time now. That's Dr. Jeffrey Tong, who is Chief Medical Officer over at Cigna. Thanks for stopping by, Dr. Tong. My pleasure. <laughs> and so, you know, there are a lot of the things that were outlined by, by the Obama administration. You kind of already know because you've been working with Cigna on these kinds of organizations for some time. Mm -hmm. So, so what's the way forward with these ACOs? So, um, to your point, we've actually have about 12 of these contracted for. The first one was uh, in 2007. So almost four years before the rules came out, we actually called uh -huh. them collaborative care uh -huh. because really it's about working the payers and the physicians working together, aligning the incentives to improve health and to uh, l uh, lower costs. Um, now, I think in terms of the way forward, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, I just need to say a high point. Um, our, the, our approach that we're taking in the commercial sector is very similar to what uh, CMS proposed. So that's good. So at least we don't have a major disconnect there. They're, they seem very similar. Um, I think now that there are two things we have to discuss. One which is, is how, do we align, how do we measure success? If the physicians, uh, if we measure it one way and Medicare measures a different mm -hmm. way, that creates a dissonance. So what we have to do is align those measurements for success, both quality and cost, together. And if we do that together, and we send the same, the, I'm sorry, send the same signal to the doctors and hospitals, okay. we will drive change, and you'll see a much uh, change accelerated at a greater rate. What about for the patients? Um, what about from their standpoint? Are they going to know the difference? Yeah. So actually, from the patient's perspective. Uh, the way this works is they would actually receive better care at lower costs. And, and how in fact, so? So, uh, for example, we've been doing this for a while. What we've seen and we've measured, you have better evidence adherence to evidence-based care in these types of arrangements. And the way the incentives work, and CMS and Cigna are in the same place on this, you don't get a bonus or any payment unless you improve quality. So improving quality is a must-pass element. Hmm. And so no matter how much money you save, unless you improve quality, you don't get any of the share of those savings. Well, how do you measure quality? Okay. So that gets to my previous, my previous comment is actually how are we going to measure that quality. So broadly speaking, two things. One is the adherence to these evidence-based measures, everything that doctors can agree to. But second really is patient satisfaction. Hmm. And I think that's what's new here is that we've not been, as a physician or delivery system, we've not been centered around the customer or the patient. Mm -hmm. And so there's a big push now to become customer or patient centric. And that should be a good thing for beneficiaries. Okay. So that's interesting. So a more, well, what people have been saying, a patient centered healthcare system. Correct. But you were a practicing physician at mm -hmm. one point. Do patients really know what they need? what they want? I know they think they know what they want, but do they know what they need? Yeah. Um, I think actually it's changing now with the, with the uh, advent of the internet and much more free flow of information. So I do think that they want, from a satisfaction standpoint, they want to be respected. They want to be communicated to, you know, and they actually, they want information moved seamlessly around in, uh, at these what's called transition points, so that my primary care doctor knows what my specialist knows, what my nursing home knows, you know, that sort of thing. So they're actually, uh, they, they're pretty clear around that. Okay. And then I think on the science of medicine, though, that's where the, these evidence-based measures come in. That's, mm -hmm. that's uh, us as professionals, we have to make sure they get the right kind of science-based science care. Sure. But mm -hmm. they're very clear, I think, around the things that what makes a good care system is access, convenience, um, and uh, communication. Mm -hmm. Well, and finally, it's clear to me from what you're saying that Cigna is is on the right track uh, and is following the guidelines that the, the government has set out. What about the rest of the industry? Um, so I think this is a, uh, a work in progress, and I do think that uh, CMS has a lot of challenges here. Uh, the commercial sector has a lot of challenges. Uh, don't forget, we're we're trying we're talking about an industry a delivery system that's been uh, practicing this way, 
in the fee for service model um, for the last you know for decades. Yes. And what we're trying to do is change the incentives to to focus more on health and wellness. The previous system or the current system really mm -hmm. is focused on disease, right? Mm -hmm. Let people get sick and then we'll yeah. cure you. Yeah. Changing those incentives around to get the system to focus on health and wellness is, is part of the story, but then getting the delivery system to change its culture is just going to take many years. So I caution patience here. It's going to take a long time. Patience for patience. Patience for patience. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Tong, for, standing, uh, for, for uh, stopping by. Okay. I'm Mabel Zhang. Thanks for watching coverage of the 8th Annual World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C.